What's up, Chris here, and uh, we're going to take a look at just uh, the markets. So we're just approaching it from this framework of um, the balance sheet, government stimulus, and black swan events. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, TweetDeck. And just see if there's any news recently. So breaking. So France has got an election. So we want to see anything about maybe Russia, like as far as a black swan event, maybe Russia taking over some cities. Like um, I think uh, one was Mariupol. Yeah. It will be offensive not only on Mariupol but other. So it sounds like they haven't taken it yet. And then we're also looking for uh, possible events where um, crash is happening either in China or Germany, uh, really affecting the euro, US dollar. Uh, so we're just going to keep an eye on that. I don't think anything has happened. Uh, we've increased back on the credit stress. So that's kind of just something we're going to take note of. We're also going to take a look at maybe uh, the move index. So let's, we want some uh, unique tickers. We'll take a look at the move index. Let's see. Move. There it is. Okay, so it looks like we've definitely um, reclaimed the above here. So we're consolidating. We didn't close the week above, uh, but it's looking like it's uh, it's back above. Uh, resistance and uh, it's it's more elevated so it's something we have to really consider going into the training week just higher volatility and uh, we're just gonna have to maybe have a um, more conservative uh, trading time frame so 1.6 on the uh, credit spreads we'll look at on the five day it's been going up since the fifth so um, it's it's looking a little more concerning from last week, and uh, the price definitely shows that. So uh, here uh, we're kind of bouncing on the 0 0.13 here on this uh, two-year range of uh, of a fib, and that's the fake out. And it's uh, it's either going to hold. We got 18 more days before the month closes, so I think this might be the month to break the camel's back. Uh, we're we're kind of uh, watching also uh, the percentage of uh, bonds inverted, and it has increased. But it's abated a little bit, but it's hovering around like 14%. We, we're looking for anything that's over 60% to be like a huge red flag. So until that happens, I'm expecting more bullish momentum. It just looks like it's more volatility that's going to happen. And uh, we're still chopping. We're in between the blue and yellow line, so it usually means there's going to be a lot of chop, and uh, usually uh, the top line is resistance, bottom line support, and uh, I do expect it to maybe possibly reach the bottom end of that. We go on the daily. We're underneath uh, the those moving averages, uh, moving average channel, and uh, maybe we test this 0.382. I think this is a, a one-year uh, channel, possibly. Yeah, I think it's it's a one year, fifty two week channel uh, range of a fib, and we're bouncing the point three two. So maybe sometime this week we'll see a change. Right now the inversions of the curve have abated, so now it's just the twenty it's seven and ten and twenty thirty. So it doesn't look like anytime soon there might be that uh, there's going to be any concern. We're kind of waiting for more inversion on the yield curve, so um, we've kind of bounced them around a little bit. But um, as far as like um, events, we've had Brainerd talk about an, a reduction of the the balance sheet. So if we uh, go here, uh, we could see the balance sheet here, and it doesn't look like it has reduced. It's just kind of leveled off. So uh, we're just going to continue to monitor that uh, as time goes on. But yeah, it doesn't look like uh, it's just kind of uh, been just tapering off like they've been saying and uh, 
we'll see if what they've said comes true of like an extreme reduction of the balance sheet. So, uh, but as far as this, we're nothing is really concerning right now as far as the bond market. Uh, we've had an inversion. The uh, the tail end is inverted, but the um, the beginning uh, the yeah the beginning part of the uh, the the front tail doesn't look like uh, it's like super in danger. If we go here, we can tell from the one month all the way to um, what two month, three month, six month, one year. It still looks like it's sloping up and it's pretty healthy. So it does look like um, near term we're we're okay in that. Uh, but the move index, you know, we have to kind of take in to consideration everything with the credit spreads widening. It looks like it just means they're going to going to be a lot of a lot more volatility, a lot more sensitivity uh, to whatever news comes our way. Um, and then maybe we'll take a look at lumber to gold. Let's see what's uh, what's going on with that. Let's see. Lumber to gold. So I've got my own way of looking at it. It's through this lens. It does look like uh, gold is beating lumber. It looks like uh, we're going into some kind of swing failure pattern with this high here as the uh, resistance. So um, I'm not concerned until it turns red and gets below here. Uh, and then we'll be starting to see a... Um, some kind of change in the markets. Let's go ahead and take a look at gold versus the market. So that's something that's really interesting that I would like to see. So gold versus the market, it does look like it's, um, if we go on this uh, six month, it does look like it's getting rejected here. And um, in two months time, we'll see if we close underneath, underneath this yellow line and then uh, make a swing failure pattern to where gold starts leading the market. So uh, right now it's just chopping around. On the faster side, um, 0.246 has become resistance, it looks like, on the, maybe this is a two-year range, I'm not 100% sure. But um, we got two more months and 20 days, of, I guess on both the three-month and six-month to see um, a, a pattern developing. Uh, so right, But right now it's just choppy. So that was gold versus the broad market. We looked at lumber to gold. So nothing really definitive right now. Um, now we're going to look at uh, the Williams money um, money flow index and then also um, the um, COT report from market structure. I guess it's... Uh, so going on... Um, I think, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just talk about uh, the calendar. So it looks like Brown is speaking. Then we got the um, the CPI Tuesday, 10 is a PPI Wednesday, and then um, stuff about natural gas, unemployment claims Thursday. So it looks like a, a decent fair bit of news. And then uh, let's see if we got any earnings. coming up uh, let's see if we can see maybe the the week So it looks like around, uh, we don't have a whole lot uh, this week, but maybe next week. We got uh, Bank of America, Charles Schwab, it's all the banks. So we'll see what's going to be happening uh, in this, uh, the value section that took off around 2000, 2001, all the way 2007. The banks are doing really good. Uh, we'll see uh, if that is the same case for um, this uh, probably ro possible rotation into uh, value. And um, maybe it's energy instead. So we're, we're going to switch over to commitment trade report. Uh, it looks like Japanese yen still 
hasn't had uh, a long on it uh, on um, so it's it's mostly been same direction uh, euro is still short I guess the British pound it looks like British pound uh, according to the commitment traders report is um, long versus everything if we were to take a look at the Williams uh, money flow index we're only going to take a look at maybe uh, the indices on here oh shoot so this is the S&P 500, and um, I'm really interested in this weekly MACD 31016 to cross to the downside. Uh, but according to the, the Williams trend, we're still bullish. We did close the week under this uh, 10 moving average channel, so I expect a lot of chop and a possible weekly return uh, point of origin. So coming down to 43.25, and then... Uh, we could be crossing up and maybe coming uh, into resistance another touch up here around 45.11 again uh, tomorrow we'll see um, right now it looks like uh, the money flow index here um, has um, shown a bull a bearish sentiment uh, and it's looking to reach to the bullish side so uh, right now I'm kind of just uh, out of everything until there's like another signal of like a rejection off of resistance or some kind of uh, bearish divergence of uh, price against this accumulation index or another um, touch of the the red side on the Williams money flow index. But uh, right now I'm just kind of waiting to see uh, if we can get a short entry again. We just had a uh, market structure break on the H4 for the S&P 500. We'll go ahead and take a look at that right now. Oh, we're at it right now. So here's the market structure break, and uh, we've already tested it once. So we could just um, come London open uh, close below this uh, weekly last week low, but um, I don't know. We we might get another attempt into here, and um, hopefully Monday uh, market open or uh, and then we come up into here and then we sell off into uh, New York uh, close. Um, so that, that's no idea if that's what's going to happen, but it does look like we're going to cross up in the H4 MACD. We haven't, but looks like it's a possibility. We go on here, we got the um, RSI. It does look like we are oversold on the H4 and H1. So for the short term, I expect some kind of bounce. And then uh, possibly if we uh, move on up. Uh, we could uh, get an overbought RSI. I don't know. Right now, it just looks like it's more bullish uh, than bearish. And this daily RSI is more suggesting just sideways action and chop. That's kind of just why I'm picking up on it. And um, I don't trust it. So I just went ahead. Whatever shorts I had, I just closed it for the, the short term for another entry to the short side. But um, on the weekly... This is a monthly uh, bullish order block. Uh, we've been holding above the last week low. I do think if we get some kind of daily close or um, I don't know, H12 close or weekly close below this last week low, it will definitely be uh, something where we retest the lows. But um, we're going to be watching this weekly MACD. Definitely looks like it's threatening to cross. Um, and then on the daily, we're just above the 72 moving average. So we're at like the 24 and the 72. So we're at a lot of support. Uh, I ex expect maybe some kind of uh, double top kind of formation probably. Um, I don't know with uh, the, I guess if we were to just jump ahead. So we did the uh, money flow. Uh, we we had a bearish sentiment, uh, bearish divergence, but right now it does look like it's wanting to touch uh, the opposite side to the bullish side. So I don't know. Right now I'm just um, not really excited to go short just yet. Uh, I just need it to come back down and touch and it it price to go up maybe. Uh, I just need the you know the the backwind of the institutions to get more confident but as far as the cycles cycles look like it's uh possibly coming to a top here 
around 418. So that's kind of got what's got me nervous uh, about going short right now. It might be too early. And um, we don't have the backing of uh, the institutions yet. So I want to just wait it out. I want to wait until we come up into resistance or all three. We got the cycles behind us. We got the uh, institutions behind us and uh, market structure break. We, we got a market structure break, but I feel like it's too early. We could still come up uh, and retest these highs here before getting rejected. But um, I'm really excited about maybe um, that possible weekly 310, 16 MACD momentum shifting to the downside. And then if we go to the H4, yeah, that was where we saw the market structure break. I'm thinking maybe this is a little early. Um, I would like to see it come into here at least, or at least touch this market imbalance and then get rejected before getting involved in a short. So I went ahead and cut my shorts. I might be totally wrong, and it just market open. It I guess, I don't know, we get an H12 close below the 72 or something. I don't know. But um, it, it can totally possibly happen. But um, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Uh, as far as like Bitcoin, we'll take a look. But I um, want to make sure I got everything. So um, as far as like the, the moving averages, we're at support on the S&P 500 and the, the 24 and the 72. So we'll see come London Open, New York Open, where that's at. And then um, as far as like the, the range, we're bouncing on either the... 0.13 or 0.382 so we're bouncing at like a, a fake out support range we'll see if that holds um, no guarantee and as far as like the the range and the weekly low and uh, daily high and low uh, we are uh, we don't want to close below the weekly low uh, but we are close to the weekly low if we get a sweep on the weekly low and then uh, we get a market structure break to the upside on H1. That would be definitely a good entry to the upside that uh, I could get behind. As far as like a relative strength indicator, RSI, uh, we're looking more bullish on the H4 and H1. On the daily, we're looking kind of like on a weak, uh, weak short. So um, wanted to get oversold, uh, overbought, overbought, excuse me, before really getting into like a big short. And we want something like some kind of extension on the uh, ADR, average daily range. On the trend efficiency, the trend efficiency on the um, S&P 500 uh, still looks, we'll get rid of this balance sheet total, um, still looks like it's uh, choppy. It's still gray uh, and we're in the uh, monthly uh, chop zone and we're we're right here. So I would say it's, say it's still choppy and uh, to you know take caution uh, low size uh, trading uh, You know because you just don't know you, you were in the chop zone and uh, with uh, you, know, you have no idea uh, where the institutions are thinking right now, I think it hasn't been made clear right now. We've we've got like a, a possible con short continuation, um, but if we go to H four on this uh, this uh, S P five hundred, it does look like it's going to the upside. So it does look bullish on the H four on the money flow Williams money flow index, and uh, could totally possibly uh, you know catch back up uh, so it does look like for the short term uh, we might get a pump so we'll see um, but yeah you know, I'm, I'm waiting for uh, a confirmation before really getting involved on uh, a long um, or short so um, as far as like volatility squeeze where, do I see anything like that so um, Let's go ahead and load up uh, weekly and daily also as well. So this is uh, daily, put on daily. This is a 12 and H4, okay. So S&P 500. So we just had um, a nice squeeze on volatility squeeze on the upside on the weekly. Now it looks like once we get some kind of breakdown, we're definitely gonna have a volatility squeeze to the downside. Uh, right now this daily, 
uh, trend is really forcing down. It needs to cross this uh, 10. If we get to the H12 and the H4, uh, it does look like it's threatening to the to pinch to the downside. It hasn't really been confirmed yet, uh, but soon we'll have an idea. It does look more bearish than bullish on the momentum, but uh, anything can change. Uh, you know how these things can go, uh, where come London, New York Open, the whole sentiment's changed. You know, some something happens. So, but it does look like it's leaning a little more bearish. It's just uh, anything can change. You know, we, the pattern doesn't even look clear. It looks choppy where it's at. Uh, there's some bearish indicators that are saying that's going to continue bearish, but then at the same time, uh, for the short term, it looks like it could get a pop. So, I mean, we need more time to pass. We need more data to really get a confirmation but I do think if we were to retest uh, 0 0.5 up here uh, we could get a good short uh, if we got a rejection uh, but we have to see but as far as like possible uh, volatility squeeze to the short side I definitely could see that in the weekly and then uh, break down on this daily trend coming down all the way to the lows so um, it's really unfortunately it's about timing so uh, you're gonna to have to make your piece some way, and uh, what that looks like. It, we all we would probably need is either a cross up on the H4 and then uh, a fake out cross up and then cross back down. So that would be something that I would like to see. Um, not that we would get it, but um, it would be nice. But if we don't get it, we could go sideways, and it explains why uh, we would uh, the. The RSI could be weak on the daily. So uh, going back here. So it does look like a, there's a possible squeeze to the short side. Right now we're in chop. So it, it does look like uh, we need more data before we can really get in. We could get in with a really small size. But um, I just want to see the, the London Open, New York Open. Market structure break. We did break an H4. And... Um, Right now, I'd just like to see it go up into the resistance and the average daily range and get rejected. So that's pretty much for the S&P 500. Uh, I've shown you uh, just the cycles, what it's saying, the the bond market, the, the yield curve, uh, credit spreads, move index, the, the cut report, um, money flow index of uh, the Williams money flow index, Lumber to gold ratio, uh, different things that uh, that's possible. That's what the the C central ba ba yeah, central bank and their balance sheet. And it does look like it, it might be waiting for Tuesday for the CPI to come out before really um, making a decision. And um, we have to wait and see. I, I think things will become more clear come Monday and Tuesday before uh, making a decision. And I do see that it being possible to possibly pop up uh, into resistance before making up its mind of uh, continuing bullish or uh, continuing bearish. But uh, it does look like it can go any, uh, any way. And my conclusion would be to wait until uh, London Open or New York Open uh, before really getting involved. Um, you know, if we get up here around four, to this uh, market imbalance of 45.51 that's probably where I would begin shorten uh, be, like at a small position but right now I'm just kind of waiting and seeing it could come all the way down to the 72 and bounce off uh, after sweeping the weekly low totally possible but uh, I would as far as shorting um, I would like for it to come up. So I think it's very similar to what Trader Main was posting on Bitcoin, where there's this, uh, it's a no man's land, and it can either uh, go up here, and then we get a short in here, once it closes this gap, or we could uh, get on along on the reclaim of the 72 in the weekly low. 
and then go from there. So that's kind of just my thoughts on that. Um, good luck. <laughs>